Welcome back to my next playthrough series. This time we're heading back to Thunderstone Quest and we're continuing on with the Mirror in the Dark. This is uh, the chapter 2 or part 2 called One Door Opens. And I'm not going to go through the rules basically because I did an entire playthrough of part 1 uh, which is up here on my channel if you want to check that out. So we're just going to kind of get into it. We will take a quick look at the cards uh, that we can purchase. So this is all pre-set up by the scenario in the book. We'll take a look at our four heroes. Uh, that we can acquire and we'll take a little bit of a look at the dungeon because they've uh, swapped a few things out there and we're going to be uh, battling the same nemesis again smorga in her lair uh, so like i said i'm not going to go over the rules per se they were done in the first episode and i am playing with a new uh, prestige class we're going to be playing this time with the monster hunter so we're going to take a quick look at all of those, and for the Monster Hunter, again, I'm just using a little D&D Mini. You don't need the miniature for the game, it comes with miniatures. Uh, I use little pre-painted D&D ones to just decide which part of the board we're going to go to, so I'll be using that one for the Monster Hunter. So uh, let's very quickly then take a look at the cards we can purchase and the four heroes. And then we'll take a look at the Prestige class, Monster Hunter, and we'll look at the dungeon, and then we'll get into the first turn. All right, so very quickly then we'll run down through all the cards. So the first one we have is an item, magic item, gem of healing. Uh, in the village or the dungeon, you can heal one wound to draw one card. Actually fairly useful. Item costing five, of course the cost in the bottom uh, right corner. And then the next one we have is Amulet of Infravision. It's a magic item, villager dungeon. If you have a rogue draw a card, so that comes in handy because we do have a rogue uh, we'll be playing with. Gives you two gold uh, and plus two to your strength basically. Tomb of, uh, Tome of Knowledge, uh, destroy a card to uh, destroy this card to level up one hero paying nothing. Very useful costing five. Gives us a gold in the village. And then we have the fireball spell which we had last time costing eight. Gives us a light. Uh, we also have a new spell this time. Moonlight which is a one plus one light for each wizard you have. We do have a wizard. We'll be seeing that here in a second. Doing one damage costing three and uh, there you go. And this is just points at the end of the game, this uh, sparkly looking uh, stone. All right, so we have a hammer now as an item, blunt item, costing three. You need four to wield it, doing two damage. And then we have the short bow, which we had in the last playthrough. Basically, you get plus one damage if you're an elf, uh, and minus one requirement for a rogue. So when we get our rogue using it, uh, this is a really good item to have for her and we'll see her in a second and we have a new weapon this time a maul minus two for dwarves so it only had six instead of eight doing four damage that's brutal but good now we take a look at our four heroes we do have silverhelm he's a dwarf cleric uh he has a four strength he can give any in the dungeon he can give any hero plus two strength uh, or plus two requirements whatever that's called i can forget exactly and you may heal a wound so a healer and then we have hawkswood which we had last time uh, she's an elf rogue basically so she can use that short bow which is awesome we have a new character this time we're lander human fighter uh very strong it's a lot of damage looks kind of brutal uh may only wield one weapon so he can only wield one weapon but he's uh, pretty tough and then we have a uh, scathian which is a new halfling rogue wizard hero she does two damage magic damage she has very weak requirements for wielding weapons, but uh, and she costs eight and one gold. So that's it for all of our items and stuff to buy. Let's take a quick look now at our new prestige class. And once again, not quite sure how well that's going to focus. It's probably a little bit difficult to read, but basically for the monster hunter, when we defeat a monster, uh, we get to level up. And of course, the first level up is we can spend three to build a barricade. The second level up is you can use a special die roll. Uh, to take a hero from your discard pile, put it in your hand, and we'll go through the rest of them as we basically level up in the game. Uh, and of course it costs zero to do the first level up, two experience, then uh, one experience, then two, and so on. So that's the Monster Hunter class. A little bit of a cool benefit there for basically when we defeat monsters. Last time we played with the uh, Towns Guard, and uh, that was really difficult to level up. We eventually did uh, this. I think we're going to be leveling up a little bit quicker. All right, we're going to take a quick look at the dungeon. A couple of things have changed, but not too much. And then I think we're just going to have the first turn of the game uh, for this episode. All right, as far as the dungeon goes, we have our basic wilderness tile up there with the giant rat. And then for the first level of dungeon, we, it's all the same places again. So we have the abandoned gate, the mine, we have the sunken well, the crypt, throne room, and the vault. Of course, level one, level two, level three monsters in there. 
The level one monsters are uh, kobolds, kobold skirmishers. That's different. We haven't seen that yet. The second levels are the spiders. So that's all new for second level monsters. And the third ones we've seen before, and that's the undead adventurers. So we've seen those ones before from the first playthrough. And let's take a quick look, I guess, once more at Smorga, because that's basically where we're going to be beginning our game. So Smorga is once again our nemesis our enemy, so let's take a look at her. All right, so here we have the lovely Smorga's Lair. I got the dice tray out here because we're going to be rolling a die here in a second. And once again, it's the same enemy that we fought in the first one, so we know these as well. You can take a quick look at that. We're on the first turn, so we have this little marker here. We're going to be rolling one of these dice, or one of these, one die. Uh, for the threat level, we're at one. So let's go ahead and roll the die, see what we get. Uh, and we already get... <laughs> Um, a barricade, or we already get a hit against our town. So that's what the little X means. Um, Alright, so that was not terrible. Oh, we should look at our, our first hand because we can re-roll that. But I think I'm going to leave that one be. Uh, I think we're going to leave it be. So let's go back to the town now. I guess we'll begin our first turn. And the reason that I said we could re-roll that is because we do have card in here uh, in our starting Barricades solo playthrough uh, that can let us re-roll one die uh, when we roll the die for Smorgas Lair there. But I think we're just going to go ahead and take the hit for the town. We'll see how that works here in a second. But we're going to get our six cards. The reason we get six cards, we're fully healed. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And I suppose we should take a very quick look as well once we take a look at these cards, at the player mat, again, just to refresh our memory. So we have an adventure, we have a dagger, we have Joba, and we have... So we didn't have uh, the character that lets us re-roll anyway. Uh, so we have a fairly decent little uh, beginner hand. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at our player mat. And then we're going to come back, we'll get one hit to do against the town. Actually, we can do the hit against the town right now. So we basically reach into our bag, there's 20 tokens in here. There are five different districts in town. And we, uh, there's four tokens for each district, and we have the Guild's Quarters. The Guild's Quarters takes a hit, and we lose the game if all locations on the board have four strikes against them, which means they're destroyed. And of course in Barricades mode, you can spend ten coins to make a barricade. It will bounce one of the damage coming towards uh, that section of town. We don't, of course, have any barricades built at all at the beginning of the game. Let's take a quick look now at the player mat. Uh, then we'll come back and decide what we're going to do. And uh, in the game, of course, if we watch the first playthrough, you can go to town. You can actually heal one wound, up, upgrade, level up one character, and purchase any one card. And that's all, you can always do that no matter which location on the board you go to. When you go to certain locations, you get special benefits of the location. So we'll see that here in a second. Let's take one quick look at the player mat. I am very likely not going to be coming back to the player mat very often, but it shows you here your hit points as you take damage. This is regular damage, and this is frost damage. I'm not sure if we're going to get any here. You can see your hand size uh, of cards will diminish the more damage you take. So there's that, and then it basically tells you what you can do in the village, what you can do in the dungeon, and of course we have our starting hand here and our little miniature that we're going to be using. So this is basically the player mat where you keep yourself organized. Let's go to the main board and let's have a first turn. Alright, so on the main board, I think where we're going to go, and of course we figured this out in the last playthrough, is we're going to go to the marketplace. Because when we visit the marketplace, again, we can heal a wound, buy any one card, it doesn't matter where you go, uh, and level up any one character. If you've got the experience, of course we have no experience because we're it's first turn, we're just starting. So we're going to go to the marketplace, which is draw a card, or then borrow a card from another player. Well, we're going to draw a card, because why wouldn't we? Might give us some more gold, more options. We get another adventurer. Alright, now we can buy one card. And let's see how much gold we have. We have one, two, three. We have four gold. So we have pretty limited options uh, for purchasing. We have four gold. Of course, the hammer costs three. This moonlight spell costs three, eight. All of these are five. So basically the only thing we can buy is either, and the heroes are six, seven, and eight. We can either buy a moonlight spell, a hammer, um, and that's it. We would have had to go into the bazaar to be able to buy a healing potion or what have you. So I think what we're going to do, um, I think we're going to go right ahead and we're going to get a moonlight 
spell for three. And this is going to go in our discard pile. It gives us one magic attack. Uh, and you get plus one life for each wizard you have. So we got to think about that as we go forward. So we do have wizard here that we can purchase. And so that's basically our town visit. Off we go now to the dungeon. So let's take a look and see what we can produce in the dungeon. So when you use an adventure and a dagger, you get to uh, wielding, you get to draw a card. So we're basically going to the dungeon now. So we get to draw a card for that. Get another adventure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to do that again. So we have two... We have four damage now. Whoops, four damage. We'll put a dagger down on the adventurer. Draw another card, and we get another adventurer. Wow, so we have two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have a total of eight damage in the dungeon, and we have Joba for spoils. Level up any hero paying, uh, paying X costs. If there is zero hero, you just get to level them up for free. So if we defeat a monster in the dungeon, we basically get to get the level up one of our heroes here for free. So we have eight attack, no light. Let's go to the dungeon, see what we can do. All right, well, with eight attack and no light, we cannot get down here because we don't have the light. Of course, there's require light requirements on this level, so we have one and one. Uh, so basically what we can do, we can fight the giant rat for four, and then we can level up a hero paying nothing. We already get that with Joba. We might as well take out one of these guys for the benefits. If we take out the kobold hero, um, which is really cool. We're going to take two wounds, but by taking two wounds, we are also going to get a treasure card. And treasure cards are really beefed up uh, cards. Uh, so do we want to do that? It's going to knock our hand size down to five for the next turn. But, um, boy, that's really... The treasure cards are really, really ramped up and powerful. We can also take out the Cobalt skir Skirmisher. Cost zero light. We have six easily. We have eight damage. Uh, if we take him out, we're going to get three experience and we're going to get an iron rations. However, I kind of do want to take out the Cobalt Hero because it gives us three experience plus a treasure card. So, you know, what? we're going to knock him out. Uh, and he has a, an effect on there. If you pass through this room, you take a damage. Well, we just moved into the room. And of course, I should have taken my hero and put him in there. So at the abandoned gate, we are going to defeat the Kobold Hero. That's going to give us two wounds. Uh, so we're going to take two of these wounds. We're going to stick them on our player board. And as you saw there just a minute ago, that is going to knock our hand size down to five for the time being. Which is not great, but we do now get three experience, which is awesome. That helps us level up the other things later on. Three experience and... I'm just going to take the, so in the shop of Arcane Wonders is a huge deck of cards. I'm just going to give them another shuffle as I throw things around the table. Uh, and we're just going to grab one of them because we do get one treasure card. So this, these are the treasure cards. So this is the treasure card we got from defeating this guy. And what is it? It is protection from wounds. Arcane Divine Spell. Dungeon. Do not gain wounds from monsters if you have a cleric or a wizard. Do not gain damage from dungeon rooms either. Holy man, that is freaking awesome. We're going to go ahead and put that in our discard pile. Uh, so that was pretty good. So we took two wounds, three experience. Let's go back to the main board, I guess, and wrap up. Uh, I think we're just going to wrap up our episode for today. Keeping in mind, of course, that we did have a Joba with us. And the spoils is level up one hero paying nothing. Paying the cost, if there is zero hero, instead pay zero. So basically we had a whole pile of zero level adventurers. We're going to level them up, and which means that they are just going to go out of the game, of course. And we get to choose any one hero that we want. And I think we'll start off with, oh man, I think we're going to start off with our beefiest fighter here. We're going to go ahead and level up, we're going to get a level one Gorlander. He does two damage, six, we, do, we bought... Uh, um, a spell, but the spell I don't think needs to be wielded by a wizard. It just uh, it gives us light if we have a wizard with us. So we're going to purchase him. We're not purchase him. We level them up from Joba, and then we just basically take all of our cards. They go into the discard pile, and now we drop our new hand. And unfortunately, because we took two wounds, we're only going to be drawing <clears throat> five cards. One, two, three. So we're going to have. Free this time, the Thunderstone uh, stays. It's going to give us a lot of gold. Uh, and then we have to shuffle or discard and drop two more cards. So let's go ahead and do that. 
And so basically, and of course the last thing we're going to do, we're going to move the timer for Smorgas Lair over to 2. And that's going to end off our episode, I think, for today. Uh, just kind of an introduction, get back into this game a little bit. So we took one strike at the guild's quarters. Um, we are, can also level up the monster hunter because it says a turn ends where a monster was removed and no player removed more monsters than you. Um, I don't know if that... Yes, that yeah, we did remove a monster from the dungeon. We have to replace that monster as well, which I didn't do. So <laughs> we'll get to that as well. So just two more cards. Well, we get Gorlander. Okay, cool. And we get, we get the Don't Take Wounds. Holy jumping. So that was uh, fairly lucky. So our hand for next time is going to be the Protection from Wounds, Gorlander, Bree Septum, and two Thunderstone Staff. Staves, it should be Staff. So we're going to have a total of uh, three, four, five, well, seven gold total. We will also have um, quite a bit of beating up power. Yes, we had to replace the monster <clears throat> at the abandoned gate. So let's go ahead and do that. Pull it off the top there. And we're going to have a cobalt grunt for uh, nothing. Oh, no, he's special. If you move through this room, discard a card. And you get a light if you defeat him. So that's going to be showing up in the abandoned gate. Um... And we've leveled up a character. I think we've done everything. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, likes. This is Thunderstone. Thunderstone Quest. We're doing a Mirror in the Dark Part 2. One door opens. And I will be trying to get these uh, out as soon as possible. And yes, I've already forgotten that we can level up our Monster Hunter. Uh, so the turn ends where the monster was removed. We did remove a monster. And so we're going to get to level up rank zero. And it costs zero experience to do it, to get rank one. Which means now we can spend three experience to build a barricade at any, any location. We do have three experience. We might want to think about building a barricade at the beginning of the next episode. Uh, and let's just, I guess, quickly leave off. We have to go over to Smorga's Lair and uh, advance to level two. All right, so basically the end of the turn means we're going to move over to level two. So we're going to be rolling still one die when we start our next episode. Back to the main map for a really quick wrap up and we're going to call it a day. All right, so this is it. So Thunderstone Quest, we're back at it again. I really do like this game quite a bit. I have all of the Thunderstone Advance, <laughs> uh, everything you can get for it. I will never get rid of it. I do enjoy that as well. Thunderstone Quest, though, I do quite like quite a bit. Uh, and yes, again, I'm playing solo barricades, and I think I mentioned in the last uh, whole playthrough, you're only supposed to have two heroes out here, and you're only supposed to have like two items and whatever. You're supposed to have a limited ability to have things. I just play with everything. It doesn't, to me, it really doesn't matter. You're not supposed to play it that way, but that's how I do it. I like having the variety of choice. <clears throat> like I said, there's kind of a built-in timer to this uh, game anyway. You only have so much time to go down and defeat the uh, the villain. And uh, if you don't, you're just going to get yourself beat up so badly, you're going to lose the game anyway. So you can never buy everything. So by limiting yourself, I don't see the point of that. Uh, but if you follow the rules strictly, you're not supposed to have the variety of stuff out here that I have. So anyway, once again, thanks so much. Uh, and we'll see you in the next episode, which I'm hoping to get the series out relatively quickly. Uh, my work schedule is eased off a little bit, which helps out quite a bit with having some time to myself to do things. Uh, and so I will be trying to do that. Uh, I also Twitch stream Tuesday, Thursday nights, Sunday afternoons. Uh, there's a link to that in the header of my YouTube channel here. If you want to check me out there, I do some uh, computer games. I'm doing XCOM Enemy Within right now. So thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.